All right, all right, all right, all right, all right, all right. I'm excited tonight. I am feeling it, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very, very much for taking your time to be on here. Um, I just want to say that for all of you that are on this evening, you're about to have a really, really extraordinary experience with the gentleman that is going to be speaking. He's someone that, um, let me just say, let me just say this. If it wasn't for Mr. Art Napolitano, um, number one, I don't think there would be an AC in Europe or anything worth even really paying attention to. But the level of impact that this gentleman has had on me indirectly is, uh, is incredible. I'll give you all a very quick story about Mr. Napolitano that I'm gonna bring him on. I was a regional director and I heard that he was going to be in uh, Connecticut doing an event. And I drove from Philadelphia to Connecticut for a one night only event um, where he was presenting. And I saw him, I just, just luckily saw him walking across the street going into a Dunkin' Donuts. Well, I, I, I'm an opportunist. And I'm like, I have him all by my, no one, no one, cause he got there really early. So no one knew who he was. And I sprint over to the Dunkin' Donuts and I, and I said, excuse me, I don't want to bother him. Cause I know this happens all the time to him. My name is James Adlum. Um, I'm a regional director. If I could just buy you, a, you, whatever you're having, it's on me. Just, could you just spend some time and just talk to me about the business and he ends up buying me a donut, which made me really uncomfortable because I believe you treat your mentors. You don't have your mentors treat you. Like that's how I was raised in this company. And we sat down and I'll never forget that he was sitting there talking to me and I was sitting there thinking, I'm having a donut with Art Napolitano. Like this is one of the most incredible moments of my professional life. And the, the humility, I couldn't believe the humility of this man with everything he's achieved in this company, he was so down to earth. So you have to understand that for me right now, this is a tremendous honor to have him on. You were all selected to be on, you all chose to be on this. So we appreciate you being on everyone. And I'm gonna turn this over to a gentleman who's an absolute legend in our company. He was the first, he was the fat, he hit regional vice president, I believe seven months was the first senior vice president in ACN, led all of ACN's expansion into it becoming a behemoth in the European marketplace. He's produced, every time I go over to Europe, I'm meeting a new SVP or RVP in his organization. His, his, his ACN business is like an RVP SVP factory. And he is one of the top income earners, not in ACN, in this entire industry. The entire industry knows Mr. Art Napolitano. So I want you to really, really, really understand who you're listening to tonight. This isn't just like another like guest speaker. This is an icon in the entire industry. One of the top income earners in the entire industry for over a decade plus in the game, oh, multiple decades. So please help me welcome top producing, Circular Champion, Senior Vice President, Mr. Art Napolitano. Sir, thank you very much, it is all you. Uh, first of all, James, I am honored uh, to hear those kind words. Honestly, I get a lot more applause and credit than I deserve, to be honest. Uh, not only did I start this business with an amazing partner in George Zalicki, who many of you know as one of the finest personal development trainers in the world, uh, George and I are separated by 21 years of age and he's retired from the field, but I met George as I was uh, seeking to grow beyond being a person living paycheck to paycheck with a dream of becoming a rock and roll star. And I sat in his seminars experience to make a difference. And I met him again in the world of network marketing. I wasn't part of his group, but he was the only guy that was talking a language I understood. I was fortunate that my dad introduced me to personal development 
at a difficult time in my life. I was 16 years old. My mother passed away very young at 39. I was the oldest of five kids. Um, cancer affected our family and, and changed everything. And I had to grow up a lot from being the normal uh, rebellious teenager. I was playing guitar since I was a kid, but I always had this big dream that I could make it big. And I really didn't like you know, chemistry books and all the normal stuff in school. I did well enough to make honor roll, but it wasn't as interesting. And I loved my music. And my dad gave me Earl Nightingale, Lead the Field, at 16 years old. And even when I just met with my 84 dad just before uh, Father's Day, the first time I seen him during the COVID uh, break we've all had from each other, you know, he, he and I were talking about that back then, the idea that he gave me those personal development tapes that I listened to every single word over and over. It sort of became my personal development Bible uh, and made me believe that most people aren't really trying in life. They think they're trying, but they're not really trying. They're not committed. And what it, those tapes did for me is gave me a way to think and a way to build habits that would allow me to lead the field, funny enough. Um, I failed many times over and over at a lot of different things, tried a lot of different home businesses. Um, I, you know, went through a couple of different bands and, and had one record do all right in 1980, sold 50,000 copies. But I woke up in, in 1989, I was below broke. Uh, I couldn't get qualified for a credit card. I was 29 years old. Um, I, you know, wanted to start a family. I wanted to buy a home and I needed a new car because literally there was a rust hole through the floor of my car. And my dad kept leaning on me, Artie, you did well in music. You went pretty far, but you know, uh, you, you know I, and I backed you in that, but you know, you really need to have that backup plan now if you want to build your life. Why don't you go back and finish your degree? And I remember I was invited to a network marketing meeting and I, I really saw something there. They talked about residual income. And that was the key for me. I related that to royalties from a hit record. You write the song once and you get paid again and again and again when it's on the radio and could be an income that survives your lifetime as a legacy income, mailbox money, if you want to call it. So the concept of residual income was interesting to me. I had heard of Amway through my godparents, my godmother. Uh, we used to go in my family. I grew up in Portland, Maine. We'd go over there for Sunday dinner and I'm, I, the oldest of like 30 plus grandchildren. And we'd go there and everybody talk about their businesses. And I remember my godmother when I was a teenager got involved with Amway. And it seems like everybody around the table on Sunday dinner, when she brought it up, they'd get out the wooden crosses and the garlic <laughs> and said, stay away. I don't know what this is, but I always felt, why is it all right for them to talk about all the things they do, but they don't want to hear anything about what my godmother was doing. And so, so be it, I, at least I knew something about it. And later on, I was actually delivering frozen food during the day, had my own little business, knock on doors. And I literally went cold, cock, cold knocking on doors to make extra money so I could just stay free in the evenings to play music. And so my, my, at least I had toughened up. And many of those days when I didn't feel like doing it, I'd pop in a Earl Nightingale, a, a Dennis Waitley, a Brian Tracy, a Tony Robbins tape, and a George Zalicki. And these guys would be my mentors to keep me going when I had those days when I wanted to quit and, and give it up. Um, over the years, James, just like you, the reason we're both in this position is we found the right company, the right co-founders have the right heart, a company that keeps willing to reinvest in people. Um, I remember meeting, uh, Greg, Robert, Tony, and Mike, and, and talking to them about their mission here. And, you know, the truth is, I realized they walked in the shoes that I've been through. I've been through failed network marketing opportunities. I even made quite a bit of money and thought I was done for life. I thought I made it, only to see these companies keep going out of business. So I wasn't really well versed in business, but I'm a good student. In fact, I'd say I'm an aggressive student. And I decided I need to learn more about network marketing uh, learn more about business in general, uh, and I needed to study more. And uh, one, of the, one of the mentors I got early on was a guy I was introduced to was Paul Zane Pilzer. And Paul Zane Pilzer is a world famous economist. He's worked in the White House for eight years under two presidencies. Um, he's an, he was an NYU professor of economics and taught grad school economics. Uh, he happened to be someone who's a big promoter of the direct selling industries uh, written uh, some incredible books, one called Unlimited Wealth. And 
And he became a mentor. I used to listen to to uh, Tony Robbins and him did an interview called on this Power Talk series, and it really changed my thinking. So, you know, as I go through the talk I want to give to you tonight, I want to credit the mentors like Paul Zane Pilzer, others like Robert Kiyosaki, and many others in my life that allow me to gather material and just be the voice to present information that tonight I hope for all of you that are part of ACN, uh, you know, whatever part of this journey you're on, you're just getting started, you're somewhere in the middle, uh, maybe experiencing all kinds of success, or maybe you're frustrated and waiting for a breakthrough, or maybe you're at the highest level of success and you just want to push it to the next level. You want to know how to promote leaders. Well, this is a talk that I've done all around the world. I haven't really given this talk for quite a while, especially since I'm quarantined up in here in New Hampshire. Um, not a bad place to be. I'm on my lake house in Winnipesaukee, uh, looking out every day doing my Zooms and by late afternoon, I'm usually taking a one hour, two hour vacation is what I told Mike Kupis as I jump out on the boat, go out and maybe enjoy a little food on the boat, and watch the sunset, come back in and do a few more Zooms. Uh, you know, this whole new abnormal is quite unusual, uh, but it's really amazing because James, just like you, I've done seminars all over the world in 23 countries for me, and we've been teaching people of not only about ACN, not only about how to become successful and teaching them uh, through the example of how we become successful, um, but we have something here that's really timely. Uh, with this pandemic that has taken the world by storm, I remember it was like a preview of a coming attraction of a horror movie because I was just planning in early February, I was gonna be in Europe with Mike Koopas. We had a national, in fact, in Italy that canceled at the last minute as the pandemic broke out around Milan. And then Mike had already gotten there and he had to cancel that event, managed to get up to Norway to do one, and then got back to Amsterdam, was going to, to uh, the UK and found out that they were shutting the borders. He got back just in time. We were supposed to still go to Australia where I was the guest speaker and that ended up getting uh, postponed. Uh, I don't know if I'll be going in September or not, but I'm booked. So really uh, we've all had to change our business model a bit, but in truth, the lessons from this pandemic, we should never forget. And what's happening right now means that our opportunity is more needed at a time when there seems to be nothing but negativity on the news all the time. It's so depressing if you watch the news every day, it just starts to make you wonder, you know, you know, are we ever gonna get out of this, how things are gonna cover? But I was just looking up some new statistics and it, and it was kind of, it's really sad if you think about it, the number of unemployment, we went up to over 14% in April, it dropped down about 12.5% or so, but millions upon millions of people who thought their jobs were okay. The economy seemed to be going along at an amazing rate. A lot of companies were having trouble finding people to do day-to-day -day jobs. And all of a sudden, there's a huge amount of people desperate to figure out how they're gonna keep their families afloat because most people don't even have enough money in the bank to get past one or two months before they're absolutely dead broke. Uh, and this is a reality for far too many people. Uh, the most, the group of people most affected is probably small business owners. As all the economic news reports and articles you read, and if you're a small business owner, you may have put your whole life into building up your name and maybe you're an event planner, a wedding planner. You know, my, my keyboard player from my band owns Boston Lighting Company and Events Lighting. He's had so much of his business ripped out from under him and he's got a family, a young family to support. You know, things have changed, whether it was the airlines, hotels, restaurants, you know, this social distancing and the reopening of the economy, as we know here in the U.S., is exploding cases, you know, and so we just really don't know how this is going to roll out. But here's a fact that's always been true. You should never really believe in something called job security. <laughs> you should learn that lesson, right? And if, if I was your financial advisor, would I say just invest in one stock? and let's go for broke. No, you invest in them multiple of stocks. That's why a lot of people do, do mutual funds. Spread your risk for, for potential and limit your risk for failure. And yet economically, too many families, too many people are stuck in a paradigm where they think they should just keep working, exchanging time for money with one income. Uh, with our business opportunity today, working from home is another thing we're gonna talk about in this, this uh, talk I'm giving you today in this seminar is that more and more people are working from home and a lot of companies are thinking that this is going to be permanent. 
Uh, the CEO at Twitter came out and said recently that we'll decide as a company when we reopen our offices, but you as the employee can decide if you ever come back to the office. So they believe working from home is actually working. In most cases, companies would be afraid to let people work from home because they maybe are not responsible enough to get the job done and produce. And maybe for some companies with specific jobs, that's true. But in general, big companies, think about the high expense of rent in Manhattan or Boston or any major city. All of these companies have had to figure out how to work from home. You know, I was having an interesting conference conversation with SVP Franco Lofranco and his, I think he said his, uh, his girlfriend's daughter or Wendy's daughter's boyfriend, his full-time job is relocating businesses from working in their downtown expensive commercial real estate buildings to learning how to work from home. He's basically migrating all these employees. And so can you imagine if you're in the commercial real estate business, funny enough, then I saw a NBC Nightly News report just a couple of weeks ago where they talked about what's happened and the risks in commercial real estate in general, that not only are those potential values getting affected and the rents being affected because less people want to be there, but all the other businesses that depend on it, you know, they depend on our commute. The parking lots need us to pay for that. That, that parking lot. The guy selling the flowers hopes you pick those up to take home. The, the, the restaurants all around these businesses are hurting. And it's just a wake up call, guys. Look, change is the only thing that is a certainty. You know, change is going to continue to happen. And if you don't take advantage of change and get in position in front of it, you could be the victim of not paying attention. Change is everywhere. We have a business opportunity where Yes, I work hard, but it is not hard work. It, I work hard, but it's not hard work. Think of what hard work is. Hard work is you, I think I see a waitress or a waiter or someone working behind the bar or a busboy at a restaurant. They're busting their butts all day long on their feet for tips, exchanging time for money. To me, that's hard work. A construction worker, my gosh, is that hard work out in the, in the elements. Or you as the corporate employee, you go into your commute every day into the city, you, you go to work at your corporation, you're working your way to the top. At the top of that, the highest pay levels, probably your CEO, your president, your senior VPs, there's fewer and fewer positions at the top, but you can only get up by climbing over somebody and the people above you are trying to keep you down because they don't want to share everything they know so that you get a promotion. They're worried that you want more money, which you probably do, and you want to take their job. Now add to the complexity of younger employees with better technology skills coming out of school that they can pay less money that can make you redundant and out of work in the middle of your working career. So the days of my grandparents working 40 years in one corporation and getting a pension, those days are gone. You know, change and learning is gonna continually be important for you to be successful. I wanna share some slides with you from a talk that is I've known uh, that I haven't really given recently, like I said, but it will give you an understanding uh, a little bit of what is happening around us today. Um, and I've given this talk, like I said, in many countries, I've had to translate it. I'm just gonna brush through this a little bit. Um, I've updated uh, before this talk, I want, James asked me if I could do this, but you know, I remember I sat with Paul Zane Pilser, I've done a couple of seminars with, and the guy, I swear his brain was born and then the body grew around and one of the most brilliant people I've ever met. And he was talking in his seminar that he did to us because we had him as a guest speaker out in Cologne, Germany once. And, you know, and he came out and he started talking about the fastest growing minority in the Western world happened to be millionaires. He said, as he studied the, the story of who's, what a millionaire is, that in the USA in 1991, there were 3.6 million. It doubled by 2001 to 7.2. By 2018, it was 11.8 million. I just looked that up. And 2020, I don't know how many there are, but the number of millionaires is growing rapidly and the percentage of people with over a million dollars in net worth and a million dollars in income keeps going up. So for our, our purposes is who becomes a millionaire and do you think it's possible you and I could be that person? And that was an interesting fact. Did you ever even dream that a millionaire could be someone like you? Well, he said that 
he took his students from his NYU economics class and he said, we're gonna study the Forbes 400 list. We gotta learn something. We learn about trends, timing and opportunities and let's study some history. He said the original Forbes 400 list came out in 1981 and when you went back and looked at the 400 names on, on that list, most of the wealthiest people were people that had created generational wealth. It wasn't one lifetime, but a multiples of lifetime where money was passed on. And you talked about the Carnegie's and Steel, the Rockefellers, the Fords with the automobiles. You know, and, and when you looked at the 2012 list, when they did this second study, there were only 40 of those original families still out of 400. Now we could do a whole seminar, what happened to those other 360 families or, or, or uh, people on that list. But more importantly for us, who is the millionaire and what does it take? Could it possibly happen to you and I? Well, first of all, his question was, is it nature? Were you just born to something special in your brain? Uh, was it the family you were born in? And there was a small percentage of fact they, they, they attributed to nature. Also nurture, maybe you were just brought up in the right schooling, you were around the right people. Uh, you just had some breaks because of your connection that someone else did. But nature or nurture was the big question for them. And what they noticed in the 2012 list that the 10 wealthiest people in the world, 10 wealthiest people were either born to a poor or middle-class family and nine out of 10 didn't finish college. Now this doesn't mean I should tell your kids not to go to college. I, both my, my, my son's got his MBA and he's also got a marketing degree, and my daughter's just starting medical school to become a physician assistant as a grad student. So, of course, I believe in education. I think the more education you have, the better is your chances. But in the end of the day, too many of us hold on to lack of education. I don't have a college degree. I wasn't born to the right family as the excuse as to why we don't have more success financially in our life. And when they took these students, they went out, interviewed as many of the people on the list that would talk to them. They compiled the data and they discussed it in the classes. And what they talked about is the wealthiest people, they, they tried to find out what was it that took you from this poor family or middle-class family and took you to where you are today. And they talked about, sometimes it was an inspiration they got from a film. It was a chance meeting and a discussion with somebody. It was sometimes a book they read. It might be even att attending a seminar like this, but there was something that happened in their brain, sometimes even a dream, where all of a sudden it clicked and they made a choice that this was going to happen for them, that becoming a millionaire or financially successful or even billionaire today was all the mindset that they made a choice. When you decided to sign an ACN application, just like me to become an IBO, you made a choice for some reason, a little extra money. Obviously that's where most people are. With this business, even a few hundred dollars extra a month residual base can be a game changer. But if you can do that, why not do a thousand? And if you can do that, it's a scalable model. Why not five? If you can do that, why not 10? Who knew that when I signed that application, that one day we would build up tens of thousands of partners and pass the 1 million customer mark through this process. In fact, we generated into the billions of billing for a business I started for less than half the price of a smartphone, less than half the price of a smartphone. And that's incredible. And so when I look at where we are today and what we have, I wonder if you've made a serious choice. You really know what you have in your hands because it can be as little as a little extra money and if you, were the, if you ever did make over a million dollars a year with this, you will not be the first, it's been done. So let's talk about what separates wealthy people from us. I remember I was driving around the little meat truck I had with the, with the freezer box with the dry ice in the back and I was knocking on these wealthy people doors. Even Stephen King was one of my customers up in Maine. You know, he was had a radio station. He used to play my band's music and he used to buy frozen food from me and that's how I met him. And so I met all these wealthy people and I one day kept thinking, here I am tucking my hair up under the baseball hat. I'm living paycheck to paycheck, delivering wealthy people all this nice food. And I'm thinking they do something that I don't. What I figured out that they did is they didn't work harder. I worked hard. That was a grind. They definitely didn't work harder. What did they do? They worked smarter. They thought differently than I did. Okay, that's a big difference. 
If you only think like an employee exchanging time for money, that's fine, nothing wrong with it. But if you want more, you gotta understand money. See, the rich understand the difference between linear, exchanging time for money, and residual-based income. Doing something once or creating an asset that can pay you again and again and again. When I read uh, Robert Kiyosaki's book, Rich Dad, Poor Dad, still a brilliant but simple read, and it really got me to understand the importance of creating assets. He said the problem with most people is the poor and the middle class work hard for money. And when they get it, they got to buy, you know, the fancy car, the fancy clothes, and they got nothing left in the bank. It's all flash and cash and nothing behind the curtain. Instead, they should really be disciplined enough to, and calculated enough to put a certain amount of money away every month, every year, so that you can invest in assets so that you can actually change your lifestyle. If you don't learn about residual based income, you know, you'll never really change. You'll be chasing money the rest of your life. I just really don't understand people sometimes when they just don't get the idea. I feel it's my first job for almost 30 years in network marketing, 21 years with ACN, is to make sure they understand the difference of working an hour to get paid for an hour versus working an hour where you can get paid again and again and again. I made a video called The Time Money Trap, which was just a three, two and a half, three minute video just to get the point across so that people would wake up. You want to change your life. It's not just more money, it's freedom of lifestyle. So Rich Dad, Poor Dad is a great read if you never run it, read it. He's got some other great books, Cash Flow Quadrant. I'm going to do a little piece on that just to give you an idea behind what, what he did, says in that book, the Reader's Digest version, so to speak. He wrote a direct selling book, you know, business of the 21st century is what he calls the direct selling industry. If you want to talk about somebody who's very bearish on the economy right now, look up him online and see some of the messages he has. See, he talked about in cash flow quadrants, we're trained to go to school, get a job, because that's what everybody does. That's just what we do. We get up in the morning, go to work, come back, live for a few hours at night, watch the news, live for the weekend. An employee mentality is drilled into us. So we trade hours for money. Self-employed, yes, I, my brother's a great guy. I got two brothers. My, 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 one of my brothers has got a heating and air conditioning business. He decided to work for himself. He left the guy that trained him, started his own company. And he, and he makes good money. His kids work for me, trades time for money. But if he's not there, there's no more money. And he's had already, he's one of his best friends he trained and he did the same thing. He left them, created a competition, competing business in the same area, fighting for the same customers. And that's somebody he trained. So there's nothing wrong with being in either of those quadrants, but you're limited for your rev, your return is limited to the hours of the time you can put into the business. He said the big difference is you want to be in the B and I to understand wealthy people. Business, big business, basically these are companies that take uh, take a long time to get up and running. There's never immediate profits in these things. So the mentality at your core has to be different. You have to be understanding delayed gratification, which is the problem with most people that come into our industry. They don't get delayed gratification. They expect I want to be paid now. In fact, I want to be paid yesterday because I need it yesterday. Well, the reason you're in this problem is you haven't been paying attention to where you're going and you've been doing the wrong things. You've been living in the wrong quadrants. You're limited to how much time you can work to what you get returned. See, of course, everybody should be investing a little bit, your 401ks and all this stuff, but that's not who gets wealthy today. It's the investors that are investing in systems and businesses that know there's not a, a quick return, but they know when they hit, even though they don't hit all the time, those few victories pay for all the times that didn't work out. What Kiyosaki said in relation to network marketing, direct selling, and this chart, is that he felt that everybody in the ENS quadrant needed to be in network marketing, not for the money, but for the education and the mindset of building an asset of residual based income, because that is where you can protect yourself and your family. And what do we do in ACN? We're building a secondary income as the beginning place. That's where we start, okay? Now think about how this world is changing right now. Think about it, how it's changed over the years and just our lifetime of my parents or my grandparents' lifetimes. Technology has changed how ECN operates. It's not the same business today as it was once was. And radio, it took 38 years when radio was invented to hit 50 million users. TV, it only took 13 years to hit 50 million. 
Internet took only four years to hit 50 million. iPods came out. I still remember my son, a little boy, saying, Dad, I'd like to get an iPod for my birthday. He said, why do you need that? I got a Walkman. I never really believed that the, the iPod would be that popular. You have 50 million users in three years. I remember when MySpace was all for musicians like me, and that's still out there, but you know, it sort of maxed out at a point. And then Facebook came along 16 years ago with over 2.6 billion users. Here's the crazy part. We made, okay, we made Mark Zuckerberg one of the wealthiest billionaires in the world without even him paying us. We did all the advertising. My, I learned about Facebook because my daughter sat down with me about seven, eight years ago and said, Dad, you ought to use Facebook. And I swore I'd never be on there posting pictures of food and everything else. But I realized that I needed to keep an eye on what my daughter was doing, and I signed up. And now Facebook is such a powerful social media tool for business and marketing and everything else. It's really changed the world. And so when you hear network marketing, and we don't spend money on TV, radio, and advertising, you wonder, well, how can you actually be successful? You don't advertise. Well, networks is something the younger generation already understands. Heck, my dad's 84 and he uses Facebook every day. You know, he's using an iPad every day. So networking is something that's not like it used to be. The acceptance of networking is more today realistic and acceptable than it used to be. And when you think about we offer services to capitalize on the internet, you know, internet capable devices wasn't even a million in 1992. Now it's in the billions of devices and we can get paid on all of these things. See, the problem for most people, when you wonder why you're talking to somebody and they don't really take this seriously or they laugh you off or they just don't want to look at it, many times it's a limiting self-belief in just their own abilities to see themselves as successful, or they just didn't buy into it, or they just think it's this little thing where they remember the Avon lady ding dong the bell or, or a Tupperware party or something, or they feel bad because they were tricked into a meeting by somebody which used to be an old tactic to some of these companies. But if you really understand paradigm shifts, it, it, it really is a new idea that in the beginning, these new ideas are usually laughed at or ridiculed. Uh, sometimes they become violently opposed before they finally become self-evident. I even remember in my network marketing career that watching, you know, when I got involved, people laughed at me. Oh, you're like your godmother. You're going to get in network marketing. You're such a dreamer, Adi, just like you're going to be a rock and roll star. They kind of laughed at me. And then when I invited them to come to meetings or started talking Sunday dinner about what I was doing, I got the wooden cross and the, and the uh, garlic again. You know, they were all like get violently opposing me. After I've now traveled all over the world, uh, you know, had bought dream houses, lived dream lifestyle, and, and, and really, I, I owe everything to this ACN opportunity. You know, it's certainly a self-evident possibility. It doesn't mean it happens for everybody. doesn't mean it's easy, but it is a simple system that in today's world of online meetings like this, I am doing more production. My business grew from February when we hit a lull when people stopped everything, we couldn't do meetings, to really getting down these Zoom presentations. I went from February to March and grew 22% in new IBOs. I went from February to April and jumped 47% in new IBOs. And I wasn't spending the money traveling and doing everything else I was doing. I was in front of more people online. The, yesterday morning, I woke up and I had presentation with a connection uh, from Australia into Japan. By the afternoon, I was doing meetings in Germany and Portugal and the UK and Spain and France. And by the evening, I could do the US. This is absolutely insane. So network marketing, just like other forms of marketing and distribution, have also been laughed at, ridiculed before becoming self-evident. Now, manufacturing, when technology was applied to that, going back into the 1800s, early 1900s, when technology advanced, they lowered their cost of manufacturing, and that's where those millionaires were made, okay? Because they used technology to lower that cost. Well, technology has gotten so good in manufacturing, replacing employees, that the real wealth today became in not creating the product, but distributing the product. Distribution became the most important way. And so, you know, when you learn about like uh, Amazon today, you know, obviously this guy got it. He set up distribution points all over the world instead of retail stores. And he, and he became the wealthiest person in the planet in one lifetime and a short period of time. Now franchising, if you do a little homework on franchising, franchising became 11 votes short of becoming illegal by Congress because it was laughed at, ridiculed. 
And yet franchising is a huge business opportunity for a lot of people today. Take a McDonald's. Most people cannot afford to buy a McDonald's, right? But the idea of franchising, that you would sign a contract, pay somebody a bunch of money to get the rights to their idea, right? And then pay them a percentage of what you sell and what you sell is in your store. That's like us having an online shop from ACN, an online storefront, right? We sign an agreement with ACN. They provide all the stuff that we're to market. They teach us and train us. And we, they earn a little percentage off our sales, but we can then duplicate ourselves and we can actually duplicate like a franchise again and again. See, network distribution is already happening anyway. And with automation and robotics, it's, it's improving all of those systems, lowering operating costs, but it's also affecting jobs and what we have to think about going forward. Okay, Man, think about the distribution billionaires. Sam Walmart, Sam Walton was the richest person at the, uh, on the world one time after he passed his com combination of heirs was still wealthier than Bill Gates at one point. Fred Smith became a billionaire with FedEx. He created an airline to move products. He was laughed at. He wrote a, po a college paper that got a low grade about his distribution and spoke theory. Ross Perot, the late Ross Perot, ran for president once. He formed a company that was just set up to store and distribute information. And so they never really manufactured everything and never mind Jeff Bezos' story. When I think of the the franchise model in McDonald's, I always encourage people in my seminars to watch The Founder, the movie The Founder. And it's the story of McDonald's. It's actually a pretty good film. I laugh because there's an audio record, an actual record player early on, and Ray Kroc, the founder, was listening to, I believe, The Stranger Secret by Earl Nightingale back then, which was like the Bible of all these other personal development guys. And so in that film, which is so interesting, the McDonald's brothers that started McDonald's, who are from New Hampshire, by the way, moved to the West Coast. They came up with this process to produce these burgers fast and consistent, but they tried franchising and duplicating, and couldn't control it. So they gave up the idea because it didn't work. So they just stuck to what they were doing. Well, Ray Kroc found out about it. He went out and met these guys and he was providing the machines to them, so the shake machines. And he never saw anybody do more volume. It was so popular. He went back to them and said, you've got a franchise. They said, no, nah, it doesn't work. They said, you're just not doing it right. Let me have a deal with you. And he forced himself in. And while the McDonald's brothers focused on the profits for selling the burgers, Ray Kroc focused on selling the opportunity to distribute the burgers and training people to sell burgers. Think of that compared to ACN and network marketing in general. I always say we share the opportunity first. I pick up customers all the time when people say no. They just naturally say no, not, not everybody gets it or wants it. That's fine, I love them anyway. I pick up my customers on the way, but I'm like Ray Kroc. I'm marketing opportunity first. Is the timing right? It couldn't be better. There's, this is the best time in history to market a home-based business. There'll maybe never be a better time in our lifetime because of what's happened. And there's a very good chance a recession will continue. And the history of recessions after something like this shows that it could last to a high level, even double digits unemployment for multiple years. And when I look at McDonald's, as they built out all these, on, uh, these franchises around the world, thousands and thousands of them, they came out within 1968, the Big Mac, it was a hit. Then in 72, the Egg McMuffin. In 79, when they came out with Chicken McNuggets, they became the largest chicken distributor in the world. Why? Because they built all these distribution points. So as you build up your ACN business, when I started was fixed telephone, then everything changed. As everything changed, we added new products, new services. And as ACN started to bring in, you know, uh, Zoom Energy, and then credit card processing. And now with our ID theft protection, it's no different than what McDonald's did. We have a distribution system. My network, your network is a network distribution system. ACN is our partner that's supplying the products and services in the store. They're always looking for the next hit, just like McDonald's was. So what we're building, yes, it's essential service. I think one of the hardest things to choose, but it's the stickiest customer. It's a sticky customer. Here's my best testimonial, James. I've been getting a residual check, think about this, for over 260 months in a row since my first few customers started on fixed telephone. 
and then they added some other services. Fixed isn't even, or traditional landline is not part of my business really, or any of ours anymore. Some countries it still is, but we've added other things. And I still have many of those same customers using other services today. The average billing per customer is actually now up, which is also brilliant. So I built a distribution system and I told people, that's what you're really doing. It's not just about selling a service or recruiting somebody for a cap bonus. You're building a distribution network of online shops. And when you compare online shops and the effect of this, I, the last really study I did on this exact topic was back in 2017. By the first half of the year, I was blown away with how many of these major brands, you know, in Macy's closed 68 stores with 10,000 jobs. Who knows how many stores got closed during this pandemic? I got to update this study again. But can you imagine all these stores they can't compete with the internet. They can't compete with the Amazon. That's just the reality of it. In fact, when they were trying to keep franchising be, be, become, uh, uh, at one time, actually, major department stores came in and little businesses proposed to Congress that they needed to stop them because they couldn't compete. Can you imagine that? They wanted price control because they couldn't compete with the big guys. Of course, that didn't happen. It's not capitalism, but that just goes to show you that every breakthrough idea is often challenged. Technology changes so many things. I saw an Emma, uh, a show on 60 Minutes one time, and they interviewed Andrew McAfee, the MIT Associate Director of Center of, Center of Digital Business, and he said, Apple, Amazon, Facebook, and Google, all public companies have close to a trillion dollar market cap combined. Together, all four of them employ fewer than 150,000 employees, which is less than the total number of work on entries into the American workforce every month. Think about that. This is not like the old days of manufacturing where they needed huge buildings and huge supercomputers. Everything has changed. When you look at the need for opportunity, automation is going to cause unemployment and we need to prepare for it. Mark Cuban. Robots that take a job formally done by a real live person should be taxed at the same level as a human. Bill Gates. Funny, I just read an article last week that Microsoft, while they let all these people work from home, have informed a, hu a huge number of them that their jobs are being eliminated due to AI. Artificial intelligence is replacing the workers that insult to injury during the pandemic. Uh, the CEO of SoftBank says the burst of artificial intelligence has become a, uh, uh, oops, I can't read that. I got a screen in my way. Um, hold on. Uh, it is gonna become a reality as robots gain uh, higher levels of intelligence, the impact on society is likely to be profound. I got this article when I was in the UK last year. Well, the, it says almost a third of existing jobs in the UK are at risk from robots. Well, the difficulty in predicting what jobs will be in the future, lifelong learning and a positive attitude to embracing change will be a fundamental aspect of future success. In fact, I got an article sent to me uh, by my friend Jesse Farrell is always looking out for things I might be interested in. He sends it up to me and it's about the first company that just raised $12 million uh, to come out with robot attorneys. Can you imagine that? Robots that will probably be able to be better than any human being because they can study and import all the case data of all these different cases all over the world and spit out a defense just like that. So the world is changing, guys. You know, Jack Ma, the Chinese billionaire behind the e-commerce giant Alibaba, he recently predicted pain is coming to much of the world very soon. He was referring to the fact that over the coming decades, robotics, artificial intelligence, and more advanced manufa manufacturers is going to make a large portion of the human workforce obsolete. This work, this could be a change in the econ economy similar to the workforce disruption to the industrial revolution where we will experience a massive shift of human jobs in a very short time. See, this is a transition. We have to have a paradigm shift about understanding the value we're creating somewhere and whether our job or our future with our company is really viable, uh, whether you're satisfied with that kind of work and the future you have there, and what opportunities are we trying to really show you here at ACN? Well, think about in, in what they said in that article. They said, you are in danger of being replaced if, number one, you aren't increasing your skill set and constantly learning new things to bring value to your company. Two, you have a bad attitude, a welfare attitude, or I'll just do enough attitude while you're never doing more that's expected of you. You think small or have no vision, or number four, you aren't a problem solver. 
These are the things they point out that was important to understand because if you don't, you'll be jumping job to job to job forced out by either younger workers of technology or younger workers who have better technology skills or the whole world is just changing and you're still making vinyl records when everybody's doing digital downloads. Now, again, I don't want to doom and gloom everybody here. These are just some of the facts that we are, you know, if you watch the news, you're paying attention, you already know these things are, are true. But there's definitely bright spots. That's what I tell people in all my seminars during this, you know, pandemic. I said, you know, with all the negative news, we got hope, we got good news. We're bringing you new possibility, new opportunity. And what Paul Zane Pilzer said, what is the one bright spot on the horizon that would give someone an opportunity to be retrained to learn new skills, direct selling? That's why he's an endorser of network marketing. We're about educating people on new concepts, you know, face-to-face -face marketing. Read the book, The Tipping Point, okay? The Tipping Point was a brilliant book to talk about how people make decisions. You know, when you hear about something once, or twice like an advertisement, you don't buy right away, but multiple impressions in the brain gets you familiar with it. That's why they advertise, that's why it's effective. And then you hear maybe even an acquaintance or a loose acquaintance that talks about that product or service, they have it, next thing you know, you're buying it online or at the store. So we know as people learn about direct selling, they may have heard it from a friend or heard it here or heard it there, but until the timing is right for them, that they're looking at their life and saying it's my life, what am I gonna to do to make change? And they take advantage of that. They may not make change. For example, I probably wouldn't be here today talking to you about this if my music career reached the levels I was seeking. But then again, I might be dead too, to be honest with you. What we have here is something where I achieved everything I was hoping for through network marketing that I wanted from music. I travel the world, I have fun for it, I get residual income, I don't have to get out of bed early in the morning if I don't feel like it. You know, it's absolutely the rock star dreams lifestyle that I've been looking for. So when I look at what we have today in home business, it's a question I ask when you think about how simple the business is. We have a business without borders. It's the first time that I've been in this company in 21 years that every single team is working together, sharing meetings. I have, a, I have my Facebook page and, and, I, and I share all my meetings. I share all of your meetings. I put meetings from all over the world that open to everybody. You know, I don't even have to know where you live as long as you're in one of the countries we're open in. You know, I can plug you into training that someone else is doing. See, we have a business now that I used to have to say, well, listen, I, I know somebody in, you know, uh, outside of, of uh, I don't know, Spokane, and do you know anybody doing a meeting there in order to get them support? That doesn't even matter anymore. I just got to get them plugged into an online system. You know, the home meeting, the PBRs as we call them. You know, you, you have to drive across town after work. You would have to go to a friend's house. You, then you have to take that time and then you sit through a presentation. Then you got to drive home and then you have to get up early, early in the work the next morning. You know, now I can cut all that travel time out and I can keep it so simple. I don't prejudge anybody. I say, hey, listen, do you, you know, any, any, how you doing during the pandemic, first of all, but do you know somebody would be interested in making some extra money working from home right now? I got a company that's exploding during this pandemic and I just thought you might know somebody. See, that's not even being direct, that's indirect. So I'm basically talking to somebody, inviting them to an online presentation. I'm not presenting, I'm just giving them an invite. If I give you a special link to this seminar, this online meeting, would you take the time to get involved? If I would you take the time to get involved, I create value that I'm inviting them to that presentation. So just think about that. Is that difficult? Is that hard? See, I work hard. That means I'm on the phone a lot. I just outworked everybody, James. I made more phone calls. Yes, more people said no, by the way. Who cares? Enough said yes. And I did better with my friends' friends than my own friends because my friends remembered me as the guy leading the band, leading the party, not leading people to change their lives. So what I learned about home business, and now the world is learning, that it actually is a lifestyle choice. Network marketing is a lifestyle for me. Okay, social network, it's, it's social marketing with, it's like social media, but with a compensation plan. Okay, we have flexibility, income diversification. It gives you the second income. In many cases, this becomes a primary income. And because of it, access to in affordable technology today, like we're using now, the whole world is opening up. We should be able to grow even faster. The direct selling industry as a whole is, is quite remarkable. 
In 2010, it was $125 billion generated in 150 countries. I just looked it up tonight, 2018, we did 192.9 billion worldwide. I've been tracking this, believe it or not, since 93, and it was 14.9 million people. And today, uh, 2018, over 119.4 million people. So you're not alone, you know, and the, high, the quality of the individual, that's what I loved about ECN. I remember telling my sponsor, Larry Raskin, and I said to George, I said, the big difference between the traditional vitamins, diets, lotions, potions things and services is I think men specifically have a much easier time adapting their self-image to marketing services than cosmetics or skincare or, or things like that. Nothing wrong with those companies or products. It's a whole different animal, but also there's a better residual tied to what we do because in those companies, you go back to zero every month and you have to start building up your sales again. That's why they push auto ship. Here, I get a customer, it's sticky. Yes, people sometimes leave my business. Sometimes people do, but the customers stay. It's amazing how much that happens. So, you know, some people are gonna come in and they're gonna be, make a little money and disappear. Some come in, it becomes a full-time career. Others go in and they wanna be SVP. And all we did to get there is become the advertisement word of mouth. We share a message about hope, possibility. We, we share a united front for changing the world. You need a personal paradigm shift to just accept that others may not get it and that's okay. Be part of this distribution revolution. ACN has changed over the years from deregulation of telecom they taught me about to now deregulation of energy. In Europe, we're launching blue green energy, similar to Zoom here, and something amazing is gonna happen as we build that brand. And our goal is over a billion dollar brand just in the European markets. The analog opportunity is what I started with, then everything went digital completely changed. The co-founders shifted with it, providing us two opportunity. At one time we we're in video phones. Of course, that technology became obsolete too. Social networking, people laughed at it. I laughed at Facebook. I, told, I, I swore I'd never be on it. Now I'm on it every day, using it mostly for business, a little bit of fun too. E-commerce, people laughed at that today. Those big companies aren't laughing at it who have to pay for the brick, the mortar, the normal expenses of running a business while Jeff Bezos was going a different direction and people laughed at him. He was building distribu distribution points and centers and not traditional built buildings and for employees to sell things. So this whole opportunity has changed. My sister sent me this Fortune Magazine story on Jeff Bezos a couple years ago because she knew I like to talk about this stuff. And she said, uh, and, and the magazine said, Everything we've ever done at Amazon, you know, coming up with customer reviews, my people pushed back at me, bad idea. I came up with third party selling. They said, oh, we should sell just our stuff, bad idea. Oh, personalization, they said, bad idea. In 1994, he said in the article, typing your credit card on the internet was a bad idea, probably still is, but we have ID seal. He said, every single idea that we've come out with has been called a bad idea. But, but our willingness to be misunderstood is one of our greatest strengths. Think about that. As you do your network marketing business with ACN, your willingness to be misunderstood, your willingness to be misunderstood is gonna be one of your greatest strengths as we educate people to this paradigm shift. I'm just gonna share a page with you. I hope you don't mind, James. Everybody's welcome. I'm in one team, it's called ACN. But if you take a picture of this page or a screenshot, my Facebook page, you're welcome to follow it. I just post meetings of everybody all around the world and helpful information. It's, it's an open group, okay? My UNI Facebook website, I mean, my, our UNI team website, there's actually 10 hours of my training videos there. And uh, I have to update some of them because of the comp plan change and things like that. But there's subjects and short subjects, short videos that gives you all kinds of information that will help you because I obviously I can't be in every country all the time. The ID theft business, I just created a website and a Facebook page just to support that as a business within a business. So my European partners and my partners around the world that wanna educate their, their friends on ID theft uh, or ID seal could use that. And then uh, my, my reps, uh, Miran de la Sierra, Bosch Bocari in Spain are phenomenal. They created the most amazing Spanish website that ACN Impresario, I can't even say it, Independe, I, you know, I can't say that so well, but Caesar, you could. But anyway, uh, that whole, that website is anybody with Spanish speaking people ought to be on that website. You know, it's designed specifically for Spain, but it's absolutely brilliant to support the field. And again, like 
Others on this line, like James, we've been featured in Success From Magazine. You know, people always like to tell the rags to riches stories, but it's not something I could ever have done alone. You know, it took a great number of people with the same, same mindset as I have. And James, you've been so generous with your time with what you've done for my teams. You know, just even recently, the leadership you call you did for Europe. When you speak on stage, I sit there in amazement. You've got to be one of the best speakers, the most motivational people I've ever uh, heard speak. You know, you almost become possessed on stage. You know, you, you know, you really move me every time and I learn from you. And so it really humbled for you to say I'm a mentor of yours. But guys, all of you think that you know, all this information, I'm like super smart or something, you know, or gifted. But the truth is, I was just hungry for change. I was the guy in the long hair with the guitar there on the right, standing on the right side of your screen. Uh, I was a dreamer. I started playing guitar young. I thought I'd make it. We had one record sell 50,000 copies around 1980. And I tried different members, different lineups, you know, trying to come up with more money to record, you know, working during the day. I mean, I just lived below broke. And at 30 years old, you know, I wanted to go and have more. You know, thankfully, my success in ACN allowed me to take my band and tour Europe in 07 and 08. I still do music as a professional hobby. But my life story has been all over in magazines, throughout ACN's career. These are some of the pictures that appeared. And my life really has dramatically changed because I embraced the concept of direct selling. And I accepted that people wouldn't always agree with me. I accepted that people would laugh at me. I accepted that not everybody wants to be great or pay the price. But I also learned here, especially in the year 2020, during a pandemic, that our business makes more sense for more people than it ever did before. We have an opportunity to change people's lives. You've got an online storefront. You can provide second incomes. And it will only reward you to the level that you understand that your income, your check, is a mirror reflection of how many other people you help to get to the top. How hard is it really to say, would you take a look? I'd like your opinion. Do you look at other ways of making money? Do you know somebody would like to make some extra money working from home? Here's a link. Let someone else do the presentation for you. Is it that difficult? You're not interested. Be a customer. Is it that difficult? We're going to give you the same or better quality, same or better pricing. Do me a huge favor. Give it a try. I've been doing the same speech with this part of it anyway, for years and years, and it works, but I just do it more often than most. And I paid the price to do that because I was a dreamer. I set goals, I put them in writing, I learned the discipline that needed to be success. And James, I am just so honored and thankful that you re got me to reconnect with this speech. I haven't done it in a long time, uh, but I'm really thrilled to be part of this uh, call with you, part of your leadership team. And I can't wait to see us all get together at an international sometime soon because I'm, I'm dying for some getting together and some hugs and some big smiles and some fun. In the meantime, you could all come visit me on Lake Winnipesaukee. My boat's not big enough for all of you, but we can have a hell of a good time. Hey, George's boat's pretty big. Maybe we can go to Tennessee. <laughs> so anyway, I, I hope something I said tonight may reaffirm your belief in what you're doing. You know, maybe take your understanding of that we're in the right place at the right time, building distribution might give you some language you could use. Um, but again, the business is not that hard, guys. It's just doing the job. Make the calls. Increase the number of invites. Be confident in yourself. Don't worry about what others think. It doesn't matter. The biggest thing is your self-confidence. Just believe in yourself that you deserve this, that you can do it. And when you've got the leadership that you have in Team Revolution with James Adlam and the other great leaders in this team, you, you got the best of the best, guys. They're showing you the path. Just get on the road and pedal, ride, drive, run, do whatever. Just do it as fast as you can. This window of timing may never be better. James, back to you, sir. <laughs> can I breathe now? I need some water. <laughs> I, I, Miss, Mr. Art Napolitano, I, um, I, I just open up the chat, right? And you're going to start seeing the messages are going to start flooding in because um, that was the single greatest business training I've, I've heard. Like, that's, that's it. And when you did this training, I mean, it has to be almost a decade ago that I heard it. I, I, I can't believe it's, I'm even more excited now than I was then 
because I knew how we were positioned as an opportunity then. But with everything that you just shared, I'm blown away by what everyone that's on this Zoom that takes this conversation seriously, what they're really positioned for in the next year, two, three, four, five. Mr. Art Napolitano, you didn't have to do it. You opened up your, yourself to all of us. Um, if everyone could do me a favor, I know that you're all posting in the chat and you're probably going to see, he's I probably see. looking at all his blood vessels, right? I want you to do me a favor, everyone, and just, Mr. Napolitano, I gave you his website on Facebook. Please just leave him a comment on, on uh, Facebook because I, I, everyone can't interact with you directly to say thank you. So on behalf of everybody, I'm saying thank you. There's like 87 thank yous coming in the last like 60 seconds. I'm just grateful. I'm grateful. You are a master teacher. And uh, I know without a shadow of a doubt, my life was changed the night that I heard you and you just changed so many lives tonight. Um, I just thank you so much. Thank you so much. You're welcome, James. God bless you and all of you. Thank you for having me on. I'm really humbled to be part of this. You don't know how much respect I have for you. I mean, I hope you do know how much respect I have for you and seeing your your involvement from that day in Hartford. I do remember that day very well. I'm turning around and James is following me through the parking lot into Dunkin' Donuts. I'm not quite as big as James. I'm thinking, this guy follow me. <laughs> <laughs> and we get in, we sat down and had a cup of coffee and I bought him a donut or a muffin or something. Yeah, that's exactly <laughs> it. Anyway, from there you created history and I'm so happy for all of you because you, you can write your own story from here on out. This is a new day for all of us. You know, don't get taken off track by what other people think. They obviously haven't seen what you just saw. They haven't studied or read what I've read or maybe what you're learning now. You know, this is a this is a vehicle, an opportunity to get what you want, but you've got to be willing to, to go out and put in the time, you know, and all you got to do is just get good at the invite, get good at the follow up, follow your mentors. Each day you're going to get better, you're going to get better, your results will improve over time. As your confidence grows, you attract better people. And that's been the key for me too. You know, I got better people as I grew more confident in myself. And that's just something you have to do. So James, again, love you, brother. I wish you all the best. Thank you guys for having me on tonight. Thank you so much, Mr. Palatano. God bless you and your family. Thank you just taking your time with all of us. I'm so grateful. Thank you so much. Man, wow. Whew. <laughs> how, how many of you feeling just like me? You're just like, whew. <laughs> I, just, I don't even know what. I don't even know what. I felt like I just got an MBA. Do you understand? Like, I just got an MBA, like a real world MBA. And like I, I don't even have anything to say. I just, I'm just gonna say this. Um, thank you for uh, all of you for being on. Um.